okay so welcome to the fourth tutorial session and uh, in this week also we will solve the problems of assignment uh, four which was given in week four of the previous run of this course so let us just uh, begin and if any point if you have any question you can just type in in the chat box or you can unmute and ask me i will be happy to answer them okay so this is the uh, course uh, and the name of the course is calculus of one real variable and i am Devojit. i am a PhD student in the department of physics of iit kanpur i will be taking this tutorial sessions every tuesday from 7 to 8 so let us go to today's problem number one and the problem states that a function is convex if and only if its epigraph is a convex set so notice the if and only if part so we have to prove it in both ways and i have already written out some definitions here so what is a convex function a convex function is a function which follows the below property for lambda belonging to 0 to 1 the fun functional value of f lambda x1 times 1 minus lambda x2 is less than or equal to lambda times fx1 plus 1 minus lambda type fx2 so when this property holds then we will call the function to be a convex function similarly what is the definition of a epigraph of function so an epigraph of a function is defined as the set of this x y um, uh, which is uh, defined on r2 and this is defined in such a way that y has to be greater than or equal to the function value of fx so epigraph of f is defined like this okay and what is a convex set so suppose s be a, s is a set then for two elements of that set x1 and x2 if for lambda 0 to 1 lambda times x1 plus 1 minus lambda times x2 is also a member of the set then we will call that a convex set so we are done with these definitions so now let us prove that a function is convex if and only if its epigraph is a convex set so we have to prove it both ways that if function is convex then that will imply epigraph is convex set and we have also proof that if epigraph of the function is convex then that will imply that the function is also convex so we'll prove them with contradiction so first let us do this one the second one which is telling that epigraph is a convex set then we have to prove that the function is convex and we can assume that f is not convex
then for x1 and x2 and lambda belonging to this interval will get this to be greater than one minus lambda times f x two plus lambda f x one. Now we know that x one, f x one, and x two, f x two both of them will belong to the epigraph and we have already assumed that the epigraph is a convex set that means the element lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 and this have to belong to the epigraph of f so this is epigraph of f but if this is belonging to the epigraph of f then we know that that has to be so this statement and this statement they are contradictory right so there is a contradiction here which means that our initial assumption that f f is not convex is not true so which implies that when the epigraph is a convex set the function is also convex so this is one part and we can similarly follow the same argument and assume that the function f is convex and epigraph of f is not convex so again uh, let me write them as x2 they will belong to the epigraph of f and 
since this is not convex then lambda x1 this will not belong to the epigraph. Okay. So, it does not belong to the epigraph that will imply that the function of functional value of this is greater than is greater than this. Now, we will we have already proven in the first part that this condition does not satisfy the condition that f x convex. So, the, our assumption that the epigraph of f is not convex is not true and that will imply that when, when the function is convex then epigraph is also convex. So, the answer to the first question will be that this statement is true. Okay, so this was the first problem. Uh, so, Okay, I think I lost connectivity for a moment. Then the thing is that uh, first we solved the this one and we assumed that epigraph is a convex set and then we have proven by contradiction that if this is a con convex set then the function has to be convex and in the second part we have assumed that the function is convex and with similar arguments we have proven that the epigraph has to be also convex. So, with both of them we can say that the statement that a function is convex if and only if its epigraph is a convex set is a true statement. Okay. So, if you guys have any doubt regarding it, you can just uh, ask or let me know in the chat box. I will wait for a few moment and if there is no question, then I will move to the second problem. Okay, I think uh, there are no questions here. So, let me move to problem number two. And by the way, if you have any other doubts, uh, you can ask me at any point. So, you don't always have to ask after just I have solved one question. Okay. So, let us see the second problem, which states that a function is given as 
fx equal to x squared plus 3x minus 10 and if we take x equal to 0 then as a, as a starting point of Newton method then what will be the value of x equal to 2. So, we know uh, Newton's method this iterative method this is given by this formula here. So, x n plus 1 will be equal to x n then minus f x n divided by the derivative of the function at that point. So, what will be x 1? x 1 will be given by x 0 minus f 0 divided by f prime x 0. Similarly, x 2 will be given by x 1 minus f x 1 divided by f prime x 1 and here the function f is defined here. So, we have to find x 2 in this problem. So, let us follow these formulas and try to find the answer. So, our f x is x square plus 3 x minus 10. So, f of x 0 will be minus 10. And our f prime x is 2 x plus 3. So, f prime of x 0 will be 0 plus 3. So, just 3. Then what will be our x 1? x 1 will be x 0 minus f of x 0 divided by f prime of x 0. So, this will be 0 minus minus 10 divided by 3. So, this will be 10 by 3. Now, for the second iteration, we have to find the functional value of f x 1. So, that will be 10 by 3 square plus 3 times 10 by 3 minus 10. So, here these 3s will get cancelled out and this 10 will get cancelled mm -hmm. out. So, this will just be 100 over 9 and similarly, we can find f prime x 1 as 2 x plus 3 which will be 2 times 10 over 3 plus 3 that is 20 by 3 plus 3 that is 29 by 3. So, these are the value that we have to use for the second iteration. So, in the second iteration we will get the point x 2 this will be x 1 minus f x 1 divided by f prime x 1. So, here this is 10 by 3 minus 100 by 9 then divided by f prime x 1 that will be So, this will be this uh, Hello, Avadesh, can you please unmute yourself and uh, there is a noise coming from your microphone. Yeah, okay, thank you. So, as I was telling, uh, to get the second iteration we have to use this formula and it will be 10 minus 3 minus 100 by 9 divided by 29 by 3. So, this will be just uh, 870 by 87 minus 
or I think I made a mistake here. So let me just check with my previous calculation. This is 870 by 29. So, eight, this is 300. So, minus 300. So, this will be 5. 70 by 87 times 3 and if you divide it it will be 190 okay so this will be 190 over 87 so let us check the options here so this is the correct answer Okay, so you just have to follow this general formula and just uh, get the derivative of the function that we are given and equate uh, the value of this uh, function at that point and the derivative of that function and then you have to just iterate a few times to get to the second iteration and you can simply calculate the third, fourth iteration with the same logic. So, x3, x4 you can also calculate. So, this is the answer for the question number two. So, if you guys have any question, you can ask now. Otherwise, I will move to the next problem. Okay, so I think uh, this is also done. So I'll move to the next problem, which is stating that for the function fx x square minus a, where a is greater than 0, then the Newton's iterative steps are given by. So we just did this in the previous problem. So the iterative steps are written as this. So, for this given function, we just have to uh, choose which is the correct form. So, our function is x square minus a and a is greater than 0. So, what will be our f prime x? That will be just 2x. So, we can write x n plus 1 as x n, then function of x n will be x n whole square minus a then divided by 2 x n which we found here. So, we are using this 1 and 2 in this formula and we can now simplify it. So, we can cancel 1xn here and this will be xn by 2 plus a over 2xn and we can probably take out 1 over 2 common. This will be xn plus a over xn. Okay. So, this is the answer of the problem number 3. And let us check the options that are given. So, we can see that the first option is the correct one. Okay, so any questions in this problem?
if not then i will move to the problem number 4 okay i think it is okay for all then let me go to the next problem so problem number four it is and here we are given a function fx where x is x to the power 4 24 times minus 24 times x square plus 5x plus 7 is the functional form and we have to find on which of these intervals the function is concave now since this is a smooth function we check whether it is concave or not by checking the double derivative so we have to check the double derivative of this function and if it is less than or equal to 0 then it will be concave and otherwise it will be convex so let us just calculate what the double derivative will be. So, the first derivative will be 4x cube minus 24 times 2x plus 5 plus 0 or 4x cube minus 48x plus 5 and similarly the double derivative will be 12. this is q 12x square minus 48 plus 0 now we have to check for this condition that if double prime x is less than or equal to 0. So, if fx is concave, then if double prime x is less than or equal to 0, which will imply 12x square minus 48 to be less than or equal to 0 or 12x square to be less than or equal to 48 or x square to be less than or equal to 4. Now, this condition is this condition is true for x belonging to minus 2 to 2 this region because when you are taking x square if this is outside this region then that will always be greater than 4 right so this is the region where the function is concave okay so now let us check us the option so let me write the condition here also okay so it is clear that the first option is not correct because uh, suppose we take a point like minus 3 then this will be not in this interval similarly this one is also not correct but this one is correct right so, the other form of the condition was x square has to be less than or equal to 4 and every point in this open interval minus 2 to 2 is following this criteria that means this is the correct option. So, that is our answer that in the interval minus 2 to 2 
the function fx is concave. So that is our problem number four. So please let me know if you guys have any doubt here. Otherwise, I'll move to the next problem. Okay, since there is no questions, then I will move to the next problem, which is problem number 5 and this is similar to the previous problem and we have to check the value of A from this given options for which the function given here is convex in the, inter in the interval 0 to infinity. Okay. So again, our function is given as px equal to x to the power 4 minus 2ax cube plus 5x plus 3. So we have to find the double derivative. So first to the first derivative, which will be 4x cube minus 6x square plus 5 and the double derivative will be 12x square minus 12ax or you can write it in the form of 12x times x minus a and for px to be convex, we have the criteria that this has to be, the double derivative has to be greater than or equal to 0. So, this has to be greater than or equal to 0. Now, we are interested in the interval x belonging to 0 to infinity given here. So, x is always a positive number. Similarly, 12 is also a positive number. So, we can boil down this criteria to be x minus a to be greater than or equal to 0. Now, we can put different values of a given in the option to check whether this condition is always true. So, first let us go from the back. So, a equal to 5 then x minus 5 the conditions become this x minus 5 has to be greater than or equal to 0 for all values of x belonging to 0 to infinity now we can clearly see that this is not true for example x equal to 1 that point we for that point this will be minus 4 which is less than 0 similarly for a equal to 2 the condition will become x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0 for all x belonging to 0 to infinity and we can use the same x equal to 1 point here for that this will become minus 1 and that is less than 0 so that this condition is also not true now let us check if for the value of a equal to minus 2 this holds true and for minus 2 this will become this condition here will become x plus 2 is greater than equal to 0. Now you can see that for all values of x in the interval 0 to infinity this is true x can be 0 then 2 will be 
greater than 0, x can be 1, then 3 will be greater than 0, and there are no points in this interval which does not follow this uh, inequality. So, is true for every x belonging to 0 to infinity. So, this is the correct value of a for which the function p x which is given in the question will be a convex function in the interval 0 to infinity. So, we know this is the correct option. Okay. So, now if you have any doubt for this problem, please let me know. Otherwise, I will move to the problem number 6. Okay, so I do not think there are any questions. So, let us move to the problem number 6 and this is an interesting problem. We have to find the area of the region enclosed by the curves f x equal to x and g x equal to x square in the interval 0 to 1. So, let us quickly plot them. So, this is our x, this is our x here, this is 0, this is 1. So, f x equal to x will be given by this curve and we can use a different color to g x equal to x square. Now, let me draw them a bit differently here. So, let this point be 0, this point be 1. So, in this interval 0 to 1, x square is actually less than x. Okay. So, this you have to note to solve this problem and we have to find the area of this enclosed region. So, let us denote the area to be A and we know it will be given by doing this double integral dy dx. So, for any given x, suppose here to enclose the region, we have to go from gx to fx. So, let us write the limits here. In the integration of dy, this will go from gx to fx and then x will go from 0 to 1, right. So, let me write it a bit clearly. So, first x is varying from 0 to 1, and y is varying from gx, which is x square, to x, which is x dy. So, first if we do this integration, this will be x equal to 0 to 1 dx x square sorry x minus x square. So, we have just uh, this is the integration of dy part only from x square to x
yeah so as i was telling this is the integration for the dy part only x square 2x and this will give you just y and we have to put the limits x minus x square so then the thing boils down to a equal to integration x equal to 0 to 1 x minus x square dx now since this is a bit complicated please let me know if this part of the first integration is clear to all of you okay so we are solving the problem number six where you have to find the area under the curve of these two functions so you have to find this shaded region so first we have to do the integration of this dy part and the limits will go from the function gx to fx okay so when you do that integration we will find that it is giving x minus x square and then we have to do the integration on the x part so is this clear to all of you if there is any question please let me know then i will just proceed with the problem okay so you can this integration you can easily do this will be x square by 2 minus x cube by 3 and you have to put the limits from 0 to 1 right so this will be minus 0 minus 0 so this part does not matter so this will be 1 over 6 so the area enclosed by these curves is 1 over 6 so let me put a box around this and this is our answer okay so if you look at the options you will see that the second option is the correct one so if there is any doubt for this problem number six then please let me know otherwise we will go to the next problem okay so let us move to the next problem and here we have to find the average value of this function on the interval 0 to 2 so the average value can be given by this formula this is known to us so here p is 2 and a is equal to 0 we have to just integrate over this interval so suppose this is the function this is a and this is b for any average for any arbitrary function then we have to just calculate this area under this curve we know uh, integration is just like summation so this is like summing all the values here which will give you the area of the curve and then divide it by the number of observation which is given by this term so that will give you the average if you want to relate to the traditional way of calculating average and uh, calculating average of a function then you can think of like that so let us quickly solve this so average of f will be 1 over 2 since b is 2 and a is 0 then b minus a will be 2 then function then integration 0 to 2 fx dx 
and what will be the value of this integration this will be 0 to 2 3x square plus 2 that means sorry I have to put a dx here so this will be x cube plus 2x from 0 to 2 so this will be 2 cube plus 2 times 2 that is 8 plus 4 equal to 12 so what will be the average value that will be half times 12 which is equal to 6 so we can see that the option number 3 is the correct option here so if you guys have any doubt here please let me know otherwise i'll move to the next problem okay so for those who have joined later the recording of this lecture will be available in youtube and also you can access this from the um, course home page so you can see the previous problems there okay so if you guys have any doubt you can type it in the chat box i will i can solve the questions that you put there and if there is no doubt i will move to the next problem which is problem number eight okay so in the next problem we have to evaluate this integration so the integration is of this form root over 40 minus 1 dt and to do this let us substitute this term here which is under the integration uh, under the root square root and we assume that uh, 40 minus 1 is equal to y then dy is equal to 4 dt or dt is equal to dy over 4 so in terms of y what will be the word integration so this will be root of y and dt we can write from here dy by 4 so the integration will be just 1 over 4 y to the power half dy right and this integration we can easily do this is just a simple polynomial so this will be y to the power half plus 1 divided by half plus 1 times this 1 by 4 factor which was here also so this will be 1 by 4 times y to the power 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2 and here we can substitute the value of y which is 40 minus 1 okay so i forgot the integration constant here so there will be a plus c so now we can replace the value of y here which is 40 minus 1 so this will be 1 by 4 times 2 over 3 times 40 minus 1 to the power 3 over 2 plus c and here we can simplify it a bit 1 over 6 40 minus 1 3 by 2 plus c okay so this is the answer So let us check. So this is the answer. Now let us check the options that are given. And if we see here, we see that the first option is the correct option. So if you guys have any doubt here, you can simply ask. Then I will move to the problem number nine.
okay i don't think there are any question so i'll move to the next problem which is given as y is given as by integration 0 to x square cos t dt and then we have to find what is y dash and y dash is here denoted by dy dx okay so let's let us quickly do this integration and y is equal to 0 to x square and we know if you integrate cos t we will get simply sin t so the result of this integration will be just sin t and we have to put the limits so this becomes sin x square now we have to find y dash which is dy dx and so this will be ddx of sin x square which is we can again use the chain rule ddx square of sin x square times ddx square of dx and this will be just cos x square times 2x so here y dash denoted by dy dx is equal to 2x times cos x square okay so this is the answer and let us see the options which were given and we can see that the third option is the correct one okay so please ask if you have any question of for problem number nine otherwise i will move to the last problem okay so i think there are no questions here so let us go to the last problem of today so this problem again we have to find the integral value of this integration and let's see how we can do this so the integration is given by i equal to 0 to pi by 4 1 plus cos 4x dx now we can use a simple trigonometric formula here which states that cos 2x is cos square x minus sin square x so this just comes from the formula cos a plus b is equal to cos a cos b minus sin a sin b right so here we are given with cos 4x so that will be equal to cos square 2x minus sin square 2x and here we have also a constant 1 which we can write as sin square 2x plus cos square 2x here we are specifically writing it in terms of sin square 2x and cos square 2x because we want to cancel some terms here okay so if we use this formula and this formula we will see that 1 plus cos 4x we can write it as cos square 2x plus sin square 2x plus cos square 2x minus sin square 2x okay then these two terms will get cancelled out and this will be just equal to 2 times cos square 2x 
so our integration becomes very simple here 0 to pi by 4 root over 2 times cos square 2x dx and this will be root 2 times 0 to pi by 4 cos 2x dx so let us do another sub substitution here which is 2x equal to y that will imply dy equal to 2 dx or dx equal to dy over 2 and now the limits will also change when x is 0 here for the lower limit when x is equal to 0 then y is also equal to 0 and when x is equal to pi by 4 then y will be equal to pi by 2 since y is equal to 2x we have assumed and we can write this integration in terms of y then the limit will be 0 to pi by 2 cos 2x will be cos y and dx will be dy over 2 so this will be 1 over root 2 and the integration of cos y will be just sin y and we have to put the limits 0 to pi by 2 so this is 1 over root 2 sin pi by 2 minus sin 0 and we know sin pi by 2 is 1 sin 0 is this is 1 this is 0 so we simply get i equal to 1 over root 2 So this is our answer here. So let us check what are the options given and if we check them we will see that the second option is the correct option here. So when you get this kind of equation, uh, this kind of integration, it is very customary to do this type of transformation and simplify it so that we can do it and we can reduce the integration in known form okay so that was our last problem today so please let me know if there are any questions otherwise we can end today's session and meet in the next week so if you guys have any questions from any of the problems uh, 1 to 10 you can ask now Okay, I think there aren't any questions here. So, let us end today's meeting and next uh, Tuesday we will meet again in the same time from 7 to 8 and we will be looking at the assignment of week 5. Okay, so bye for today.